This is Apple's brand new M2 Max MacBook Pro with the 38 core GPU, and so is this. The only difference is the size. In fact, they are spec the same with 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of SSD. And the question I'm gonna answer in this video is, do you sacrifice any performance by going with the smaller 14 inch model? Now what I do wanna mention is that with the 16 inch you're paying $200 more and you are getting something that you can't get on the 14 inch model and that is high power mode. And the crazy thing this year is that Apple actually allowed high power mode to give you higher clock speed. As you can see right here, 3.68 gigahertz single core compared to 3.49 limited on the 14 inch. And to save some time, I've already ran the Geekbench benchmarks. As you can see right here, the multi-core performance is around 15,000, the same across both of them. However, because of the higher clock speed, we have 2,059 single core on the 16 inch compared to 1953. Now, is that gonna make a difference in the real world? Well, I did test Speedometer 2.1, which is a browser benchmark, and it's basically the same. It seems like it's going down to the same clock speed when web browsing for some reason, so it's not really utilizing the full 3.68. And now to save time, I also tested Metal in Geekbench. We have basically the same 85,000 points, but of course we do know that Geekbench's Metal test doesn't fully utilize the chips because it has some gaps where it's not running in high power, full performance state. So because of that, let's switch to something better, which is GFX Bench Metal. We're gonna test the 4K and 1440p Aztec Ruins high tier off-screen tests, and I did open up Acetop so I can measure the peak wattage to see if there's any differences. Let's get started. Holy moly, I cannot believe this difference. This is without any thermal throttling fans, nothing. The 16 inch is actually 16 and a half percent faster in terms of the FPS and the 4K test, and 20% faster in terms of 1440p. Imagine that, this is without any thermal throttling at all. That is really weird, almost like the 14 inch is instantly down clocked. I honestly did not expect to see 20% more FPS, like this is a gaming workload. If anybody does gaming, the 16 inch for $200, you're getting 20% higher performance. Very impressive. I actually wanna check out Acetop to see the peak wattage here. Oh, look at that. 58.8 .8 peak wattage on the M2 Max 16 inch, but on the 14, it was limited to 55, so it couldn't push out as much wattage. And now before I get into the real thermal throttling overheating testing with Cinebench R23, I do want to run Wildlife Extreme, which is an unlimited off-screen test where I can actually monitor the frequency. So let's go ahead and turn this on and see if we have any caps. Let's watch this. So pay attention to the GPU usage right here in the clock speed, 1398 we have for the 16 inch. So that's full maximum clock speed. And look at that, we have the same 1398 on the 14 inch, no difference. Whoa, wait a minute, look, it's actually down clocking itself during the test. You saw that little spike, you can see on the 16 inch you have all solid bars right here, that's 100%, but look, it actually down clocks slightly during the test. That basically confirms some sort of throttling that Apple is putting on the 14 inch that they're not on the 16, even without overheating with high temps, it did clock the GPU down for some reason on this 14 inch. And I do want to mention that low power mode is off, nothing like that, it's plugged in, no issues at all, and we are seeing a drop in score. 132.7 FPS compared to 150.7 on the 16. That's 13.5% more FPS with no throttling due to heat at all. Something else is limiting it. All right, so that was very interesting to see, but let's switch over to the CPU side with Cinebench R23. I'm gonna do a single multi-core test first to kind of establish our baseline for both of these machines. And wow, even just on this test, I already see the 14 inch heating up a lot faster. 93 degrees compared to 88 on the 16 inch. It's definitely heating up quicker. And yep, the fan did just turn on 2400 RPM. Fan is still off on the 16 inch. And 100 degrees Celsius on the 14. That was pretty quick before even finishing one run. But it didn't matter for the CPU. We have basically the same score, 14,700 on both of them. And now let's do the 10 minute throttling test. I'm gonna open up MX 
power gadget to monitor the clock speeds of everything. You can see right here frequencies. We have the E cores, 2.42 on both, 3.26 for the performance cores, and the GPU is not really being used, so it doesn't matter. You can see the wattage right here, 35 watts, 35 watts for the whole package. CPU right there, 35. We have the temps and the utilization, which is not gonna matter for this test. Holy moly guys, 105 degrees Celsius, 106 right there. It's heating up insanely fast. And wow, the difference in fan speeds is insane. Holy moly. 5200 RPM already on the 14 inch, while this one's basically idling. Look at that, you can see the green bars, barely above idle, where we're literally 5700 RPM on the 14 inch, and I can audibly hear it quite loudly now. And whoa, I did not expect this. Look, the 14 inch allows the fans to ramp up to 6800 maximum. That is insanely fast. I don't even think they did that before. So Apple knows this thing's heating up really quick if they're giving that big of a maximum. All right, guys, I've got to give props to Apple because they were able to contain the heat before it hits 108 degrees Celsius, which is usually where you see the thermal throttling happen and the clock speed go down on the CPU. They ramped up those fans really quickly, so good job, Apple, on that fan curve, and now it has it under control. But wow, the 16 inch is so impressive. 102 degrees Celsius, the fans are still at 2,000 RPM. It's handling the heat so much better than the 14. And now that we're eight minutes into the test, I do want to look at the actual chassis temperatures. And wow, look at the 14 inch, 47 to 48 degrees Celsius right there on the display because it does have vents right behind the hinge. So it's pushing a ton of heat out. Now it's cooling down a little bit. Let's look at the 16 inch. Wow, 42 and it's actually on the hot spot. It is handling the heat like crazy, so much better. But wow, it didn't even matter, look at that. The 14 inch actually got four more points than the 16 inch, so no difference. It's able to keep the performance. Good job on that 14 inch. But now let's do the ultimate unrealistic stress test. This is not gonna happen in regular use where it's gonna do 100% CPU and 100% GPU at the same time with Wildlife Extreme, the stress test. So let's start that up and then let's go over here and start the multi-core Cinebench at the same time. And oh my goodness, uh, oh, I can't believe it. Look at that, oh, the performance cores on the 14 inch are clogged down to 1.27 gigahertz compared to the actual 3.26 that you're actually supposed to get. Even the 16 inch is throttling right now. Holy moly. What the heck, this does not make sense. We're sitting at 170 degrees Celsius on the 16 inch, but the 14 is only 90. It's clocking the CPU down like nuts. 1.2 gigahertz? Are you kidding me? It is literally capping the wattage. Look, only 30 watts on the entire package compared to 52 on the 16 inch. 18 watts, what is going on? 60 watts, 62 watts on the 16 inch, under 30. Literally, Apple is capping the 14 inch model like nuts. This is pushing power. This is giving us good results. I don't know what Apple is doing with this 14 inch, capping the processor like this. Now, one thing I do wanna mention this year with these M2 Pro and Max models is that the heat sinks are smaller compared to the previous generation. But let's do another thermal camera comparison. Holy moly, 53 degrees Celsius on the 14 inch, even though the chip temp is low. Wow, 52 degrees Celsius. And then on the 16, we have 46. Wow, that is a huge difference. This thing is hot to the touch. Holy moly. That finally explains why we're seeing 88 degrees Celsius on the chip because they are throttling it so badly because it's heat soaking it anyway. All right, the 16 inch model finished first. We have a score of 11,344. So it is down thermal throttled compared to the baseline that we did before. Oh my gosh, the 14 inch just finished. I cannot believe that score. 4,553, it lost over half of its performance in this extreme thermal throttling test. I can't believe that level of throttling. Absolutely insane. And as it stands right now, just comparing these two scores, the 16 inch is two and a half times higher in terms of Cinnabon's score, which is 
bonkers. And keep in mind, we still have Wildlife Extreme running. So I'm gonna let this run and then we're gonna analyze the performance charts for the graphics as well. And there you go, the 20 minute stress test is finished. And wow, look at that, the 16 inch is incredibly stable, 99% stability, which is basically the difference between the best loop score and the lowest. So 19,965 for the best. And then on the 14 inch, 94.2% stability. So big drop there. And even the best loop score is lower than the one on the 16 inch, 18,353, which makes the 16 inch 9% faster in terms of this test while being two and a half times faster in Cinebench. So huge difference in terms of thermals. Now I know that was an extreme and unrealistic test, but keep in mind that there are tasks out there that use both the CPU and GPU, and I'm actually gonna be running one of them in terms of Final Cut Pro video editing. So if you're one of those people that does have a task like that, the 16 inch is looking a whole lot more promising. But now let's get rid of the benchmarks and let's get to some actual real world productivity work. And the first one is gonna be Blender 3D rendering. I have the BMW project open right here. So let's go ahead and hit render image. And wow, I was not expecting this. 16 inch finish in 22 seconds compared to 31.5 on the 14 inch. That's basically a third slower compared to the 16 inch model. Wow, let me tell you, this 16 inch is getting more and more appealing as we're getting into this testing. Now opening up the uh, party tug project and I am noticing it load faster on the 16 inch, which is a great sign. And let's go ahead and render party tug. They're done and wow, we have basically the same score, a minute and four seconds on both. This is still cycles, so I don't know what difference there is compared to BMW. And now I'm curious to see how this affects photo editing because Lightroom Classic now is using a lot of the GPU. So I have 50, 42 megapixel raw photos right here. As you can see, we can kind of go through them. I don't expect any difference whatsoever in terms of smoothness in the real world while actually editing them, but I do wanna test out exporting. So I got my timer ready, let's go ahead and export. Look at that, they both finished at the exact same time, 44 seconds, no difference whatsoever for this Lightroom Classic export. And now let's move on to video editing in Final Cut Pro. Now in terms of editing regular and common formats like H.264 and HEVC, which most people are editing, I don't expect any difference at all because it is encoder and decoder limited. And just to prove it to you guys, I'm gonna run an export test right here with my timer. And as you can see, they're both basically neck and neck. And if we look up here to the CPU and GPU usage, 15% for CPU, 40% for the GPU. That means that they are not being pushed because it's waiting on the actual media engine. So there's no way we would see any difference between these two. There you go, a minute and 13 seconds exactly on both of these. And realistically, you should expect the same exact results with ProRes as well because these chips have ProRes encoders and decoders. So to find a difference between these two, we have to find something that isn't gonna be limited by the media engines and does push the CPU and GPU. And that's why we have this right here, 8K Canon R5 raw video put into a 4K timeline. This is extremely stressful on the CPU and GPU. Let's actually run it. As you can see, it's dropping frames all over the place. Look at that, CPU and GPU are basically getting pushed like crazy, 80% on each on both of these machines. This is a hard test and it actually is realistic because some people do work with this footage and they like to have MacBooks. And for you guys, this is a test for you, so let's run this export. I actually have MX Power Gadget because I'm curious about the throttling as well. And look at that right away. We are getting throttling on the 14 inch, 2.3 gigahertz on the performance core, while the 16 is staying at 3.27. And same thing for the GPU, 1.38, 1.39 on the 16, 1.25, 1.19 on the 14. So both the CPU and GPU are already throttling. And wow, I didn't even notice the 16 inch, 108 degrees Celsius, fully up to the temperature limit already. And keep in mind, this is not some fake benchmark. This is a real test. While already the 16 inch is basically maxing out its fans while we have about 3,600 on the 14 inch, about halfway. We're about three minutes in and so far the 16 inch is handling this beautifully. I'm barely seeing any throttling at all, essentially no throttling on the 16 inch 
while the 14 is getting just crushed. The performance cores are down to 2 gigahertz, GPU is down to 1.2 gigahertz, so crushed in terms of throttling. And you know what, let's just throw in a final thermal camera test right here. We have the 14 inch, you can see 50 degrees Celsius right over there, and whoa, 43, 44 on the 16 inch. Once again, even in a real workflow like this, a big difference in temps. And there you go, I have the results. Wow, that's incredible. The 16 inch finished in six minutes and 41 seconds. The 14 inch finished in nine minutes and 28 seconds. That's two minutes and 47 seconds longer. That is worth $200 for the 16 inch. If you're doing high end work like this, that's mixed CPU, GPU, that is worth it. Definitely get the 16 inch in this case because wow, that difference is huge. So with all that said and tested, let's answer the original question. What do you sacrifice by going with the 14 inch M2 Max 38 core over the 16 inch? Well, in those extreme thermal throttling tests, like that video editing test we just did, you're sacrificing quite a lot of performance due to thermal throttling. You're also sacrificing the Blender 3D rendering tasks like we saw in BMW, taking a lot longer on the 14 inch without any throttling going on. And especially for that that gaming test GFX bench, we saw up to 20% higher FPS on the 16 inch. And to think that we just had the difference just because of the size, $200 more, that is well worth it. But let's be real, let's calm down. I'm gonna try to be a little bit more calm this year. In reality, both of these are extremely good. They're more than enough for 95% of people out there, but if you care about having the most performance you can get, go with the 16 inch. Or if you have a psychological thing where you don't wanna feel like you're getting limited in any way, like you wanna have the maximum performance, then go for the 16 inch. But if portability matters more to you and you're okay with letting a little bit of performance go, the 14 will be just fine. Don't worry about it. Forget about seeing those numbers. Just go for that if portability matters more to you. But in my case, I like that display. That's a nice big display, the extra battery life, the extra performance, that's what I would go with, especially for the $200 difference. So that is my take. Hopefully you enjoy this video. And if you did, go ahead and click subscribe. Check out more videos right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.